Yeah, you are live. Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel and this month's live stream in which I will be baking a cake live, which is something that I have never done before. So I am a little bit nervous about the prospect of both baking and live streaming because as you know, um, if you were here for the Christmas live, I'd already pre-baked the biscuits that we were going to decorate. So this is a new thing, I'm going to need everyone's support and maybe we'll get a cake at the end. Yeah, so I'm going to bake a Victoria sponge cake, which is something that I have baked loads of times because it is both Mr. Purple, one of Mr. Purple and uh, Supergirl's favourite cakes. So I've made it quite a lot of times and I have a bit of a fail-proof method. So hopefully today is not going to be the day that it goes wrong. So this is my little tip for making a Victoria sponge. You'll notice that I am using a recipe just to remind me of the stages because you know, working memory, not great. Um, but this is the tip that is the way to make a fail-proof good Victoria sponge. Basically, what you do is you get the number of eggs that are required by the recipe, in this case, four eggs, and you weigh the eggs. And then I've written down the weight of the eggs on my hand because my brain is not gonna remember it. So they weigh 230 grams, and then I'm gonna put the same amount of flour, butter, and sugar as the eggs weigh. So 200 and, see I forgot already, 230 grams of flour, butter, sugar, because that's what the eggs weigh. Simple, see, simple. So I'm just gonna put these eggs over here and I'm gonna start by weighing out my butter. And while I'm baking, we can have a chat if there's anything anyone would like to chat about. Let's start with, what is your favorite cake? What is your favorite cake? My favourite cake is, well that's a tough one isn't it, because there's so many different kinds of cake. I think it might be, so I'm not actually using butter, I'm using stork baking block, which is dairy free and works the same as butter. With baking. What is my favourite cake? Uh, what would you say that my favourite cake is? Do you want to come in here? Wonder Girl, what would you say that my favourite cake is? Um, Do you want to come in so they can see you? Hey, so everyone say hi to Wonder Girl. Uh, this is embarrassing. I don't actually, I don't know. You don't know? No one can hear you either if you're whispering. I know. Um, this is embarrassing. I don't you don't know. You don't know. Okay, okay, so let's let's have another competitor. You may leave. Don't know me. Bye, right, well. boy. <laughs> Good luck. No. <laughs> He's shaking his head like, I already know that I don't know what your favourite cake is. Well, if I don't know, how can I explain? I'm, I'm back. back yeah. I'm back, sorry. I don't know what happened there. Glitchy internet. I will give you a little internet update whilst I cream my butter because that's I'll what I'm going to do. Cakes. cakes, yes. Somebody's some making red velvet cupcakes. Somebody is making chocolate cake. Somebody says chocolate cake. Uh, somebody says Victoria sponges are mum's favourite, so she's looking for tips to make the perfect one. Chocolate cake or banana cake. Uh, Chocolate uh, cake, banana Susan cake. Susan doesn't like cake. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, right. So now what I'm going to do is weigh out, as I mentioned before, the same as the eggs, 230 grams of caster sugar. And whilst I do this, I'll give you a little update on my internet. So as you who are regular, you who are regular, as regulars, sentences, who needs sentences? As regulars know, we've been having a little bit of trouble with our internet when it comes to streaming. Um, so after the last live stream, immediately after the last, last live stream, because I was so frustrated, we went and had a look at whether we could get fibre direct to, to door um, broadband, which is basically fail-proof broadband, from what, I can, from what I can gather from what people have told me. So we have put in a request for direct to door fiber connection, but I'm not sure. Basically, you have to put in a request and 
then they get back to you, let you know whether they're going to come and fit it. So that's as far as we've got with that. And in the meantime, I had considered not live streaming at all, but that's no fun, is it? So I thought in the meantime, we'll just be patient with the internet, collectively patient with the internet. We'll just pretend that we live in dial-up times. It'll be like an old-fashioned experience. Will she stay on for the entire hour? Who knows? Depends how many people are using the internet. Right, so I've got my butter and my caster sugar. And I'm going to use my KitchenAid now. I'm a little bit worried about this because what I hadn't considered before...
I guess you're live. Hello! Can you see me? <laughs> Sorry guys, that was a different internet issue to the internet issue, issue I was describing before, which was just our internet being slow. This instead is, oh, and I haven't got you guys here and I want that. This instead was a complete internet fail where the internet just went and nothing worked. So hopefully that won't happen again. Right, so I'm gonna use the KitchenAid. I should have done this while we were not live. I hope that's not too horrendous. Okay, how was that sound wise guys? I hope that wasn't too I hope that wasn't too hideous for you. But we have got now a nice fluffy butter and sugar, which uh, is what we want. It should be fluffy and light. So I'm just gonna scrape that all back into the bowl to make sure that it's all good because I think it's egg adding next. Right, okay, it's okay, we're all fine, I'm back on the internet, everything is okay. No. And it's dropped from here. I can't be dropping in and out. I'm not doing it under that conditions. Okay, I appear to be dropping in and out. So I think that we call it that if I drop out again, this isn't happening, <laughs> frankly, <laughs> because it's a lot of work doing a live stream. And I think it'll be quite stressful if we can't keep an internet connection. So this is cross your fingers time because I think, do we all agree in the house that if we go out again? I think that's the general consensus. Have I dropped out again? No, 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 mirror. Mirror. Oh. Oh. Get them better internet. Thanks, mirror. Thank you so much. I'm very stressed. It's all very stressful. Dropping in and out is very stressful. This is new. We didn't have this before. I was glitching. Now I'm dropping. I don't know. Right. Where was I? Flour. Yes. Try and make a cake whilst streaming and chatting and also dealing with internet problems whilst not having a meltdown. <laughs> right. How much do I need to weigh the same weight as the eggs, which I need to check my hand for, and it tells me it's 230 grams. So 230 grams of flour. This is self-raising flour, but you could use plain flour with baking powder if you so desired. Don't know why you would, but you might. Ooh, 230, right. Which of my children would like to crack eggs for me? Yes, Wonder Girl. Right, Wonder Girl. Here. Here you go. I would like you to crack yes. these four eggs. Okay. No shell, please. I'll no try. pressure. No <laughs> pressure. <laughs> Into this bowl. Okay. For right. these people's entertainment. Because this in lockdown is what classes is entertainment. So attempt trying. Yes. Oh, that's perfect. Good job. And you can pass it to me and I'll be like your assistant. Yes. And it can go There's straight like into the wave. compost, which isn't here, so that you had a nice shot. It's not going to go into the compost. It's just going to go, oh, more money for the internet. Thanks, Mel. <laughs> I, would, I would hope that we will be able to Let's get... Let's go, another good one. What you need to do... And so skills. Is you need to write to, who is it? BT Open Net. Yeah. You need to write to BT Open Net or email them and be like, look, Purple Ella wants to live stream. Unfortunately, her internet is not playing fair. Could you please get in touch with her about installing fibre to her house? Because that would be great, please, and thank you. Oh, no, we've got egg on the recipe book. I'm just going to stick this I, I'm going good. I'm just going to, you know, hold it. I'm just, oh, kitchen roll. Don't you know who she is? Kitchen roll. Oh, do you know? Just, Let's go. No just shells. Don't Sicily. I'm doing good. So, uh, Wonder Girl. Excellent work. Uh, 
that for you, Dave? It did, yes. Um, kind of just kicked him out of the thing. It was an accident. <laughs> Somebody doesn't know that self raising fire exists. Am I back here? Not yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm back. Oh! <laughs> Mr. Bevel didn't tell me. Sorry. You need to tell me if I've dropped out. Somebody said it was an accident. An accident, yes. It was, we cracked it. Somebody Maybe said, this time we've cracked it. <laughs> somebody said, don't leave, believe. Don't leave, believe. That's Henry VIII, right? Don't leave, believe. Mm. So what have I been up to? Let me fill you in. I've been busy making lots and lots of video content because I thought it would be a really great idea to start doing TikTok because I thought, you know, I can... I can hang out with the young'uns over on TikTok. There's a whole demographic aged roughly 18 to 24 over there. No, 14 to 24? I don't know. Some younger dem demographic that are much younger than me who might also know, like to know more things about autism and ADHD. I can do that. That will be fine. Short form video. Cue me being absolutely shattered because I'm producing like five videos a week between the YouTube one, which is obviously a lot of work, and the shorter videos and... It's a lot, so I haven't been up to a huge amount, but I have, there have been some developments with my teach myself to play the piano, in that I have gotten hold of a, and this is very exciting, Easy Piano Frozen and Frozen 2 songs, which when it arrived in my house, made everybody in the house go, oh, if you've got to learn something, you have to learn something from Frozen. It's bad enough that we have to listen to stuff on repeat over and over again, let alone it being something from Frozen. And do you know what I say to that? I don't care. I don't care. It's going to be fun for me to learn songs from Frozen, and then I shall sing them. And then I shall sing them on a TikTok video. And then a record producer will find that TikTok video and will say, Ella, we need you to record an album. And the next thing we know, I'm going to be like Taylor Swift. You heard it here first. Right, now what I've got to do is put in the egg in small bits. So I put some of the egg in. You don't want to put it all in at once because if you do, it curdles essentially. So I'm going to put some of the egg. Did any of you find that when you're baking or cooking, you really notice that you're neurodivergent because you make three times as much mess as an ordinary person whilst baking would make? I managed to leave trails of baked goods around the kitchen whilst I got some whipping. This is a part of, hang on, there's no good talking while whipping, is it? So this is a part of the plan that I had not considered. Now, I cannot do this by hand because my wrists will not be able to cope with it. Uh, but I'm very sorry, but there are only going to be, I think now, about two more KitchenAid moments and then that's it. What's that? Miro says, oh, she, he says he wishes he was younger so you could adopt him if Mr. Burpo agrees, of course. Is that uh, weird? It's weird. <laughs> it's a little bit weird. <laughs> <laughs> but then I will say those of you that are in the group Miro has just made me some really cool graphics for future videos so now I'm thinking maybe he can live in our attic I don't know did he no, mean in the attic? no I don't think he meant that did he mean in the attic? didn't mean being like the guy in the attic who you go up to with technical difficulties and board get for board games <laughs> Right, two more KitchenAid moments, that's it, I promise you. Oh, goodness me. Making a mess. This is the last but one, and then I'll just be chatting. Okay, sorry about that, folks. So I was originally going to make Lego for your entertainment because I thought... Oh, brilliant. This is going to be great because uh, I can use live streaming and my job as a YouTuber as an excuse to buy some Lego. I thought, brilliant, great, no, no guilt Lego. Um, and it didn't 
arrived and I ordered a really, really cool set that I'm very excited about. I'm not going to tell you what it was because it's still on order and so I'm therefore hoping that it will arrive um, in time for the next live stream. But it is not here yet. What's up? Luke would like to know what's your favourite hobby you've picked up during lockdown? My favourite lockdown hobby? Ah, that's a good question. Have I gotten a new hobby? Ah, probably playing the Nintendo Switch. So yeah, prior to lockdown, I did not really play video games, and I did not really, and I did not own a Nintendo Switch. I've got a light, a Switch light. And then lockdown happened, Animal Crossing became a massive thing. I thought, I want to live in Animal Crossing too, and I happened to have um, a little bit of a grant for something that I then used to buy the Switch light. So that is my hobby and I'm currently really really quite quite keen on Pokemon Shield which is really funny because I've never really thought of myself as like an autistic cliche in those ways like in a way I've kind of wished that I was an autistic cliche like I was into train spotting or Pokemon essentially and now I am into Pokemon so I've actually bought a Pokemon t-shirt so decided am I that I am a Pokemon person I bought a Squirtle t-shirt, which I'm very excited about, because that's the other thing. Let me just put this in. Do I put it in all in one go? Let's see. No, yes, I put it all in. So this is flour going in here. Oof. Oh, thanks, Mel. I have technical difficulties too. It's not easy. It's not easy not getting, making mistakes on the internet. Right, la this is the last. Let me make sure I've put all the ingredients in. Yeah, this is the last KitchenAid thing now, okay? Oh, I was supposed to do this. This is a shield so that I don't spray the whole kitchen with flour that is right next to the KitchenAid, but I still managed to forget to use. Go me. Right, how does it actually work like that? And then you need to put a little bit of milk. I normally use oat milk, but I haven't got any oat milk this week, so I've got almond milk, which I've never had before, so I don't know what it's like. Unsurprisingly, it smells like almonds. Oh, there's even a little scoop. I've never noticed this before. There's a little scoop for putting stuff in. And the other exciting news, though, is that hopefully by the next time we stream, I have an even better camera to stream with. So the picture quality and the sound may improve. We'll get there. Right, that's it for KitchenAid usage. No more buzzing. We're all good. Okay. Oh, oh dear. Right, I have produced cake mixture. Now, the, the first thing that happens is that I will put this into the tins to cook. Oh, by the way, I did put the oven on before I started because otherwise I'd have probably forgotten. And it's on at about 180. Just at what temperature I would wish to fan oven to cook this up. I was saying something before I started saying that. Oh, yeah. So I'm going to put this in the cake. And I can already see Mr. Purple is essentially looking at me the way Coco looks at me when I'm pouring out her dinner, waiting for the um, mixture that's left over after I've put it in the tins to eat. And, he, and oh, he will have to wait. Stop, you have to wait patiently. His hand is literally outstretched, honestly. Like a child. Sometimes people wonder why, um, well no, sometimes I wonder why why would you marry me? I mean, not really a straightforward ride. But then I do make a good Victoria sponge and that's probably enough for him. Right, the next thing I am going to do, we do quite well the whole talking, live streaming, baking, dropping out thing. I think, I think we're doing okay. No one's crying, unless you're crying, which is hopefully not the case. So now I've got to distribute this. I have these silicon silicon um, baking things because they're marvellous. You don't have to grease them, you don't have to line them. And I got these a really long time ago, well pre-children, and Mr. Purple said, you can buy those if you promise me you're going to make Victoria sponges to go in it. I think I have made good on that promise. Right. Oh, 
have a bit of an issue because this is really heavy and it hurts my shoulder and I've got a bad neck. Milo, I mean, oh no, we've both done it. We've both used that. Oh. Come on, Robo boy, fail. Where would you like me to push it? If you could just um, distribute, if you could hold it up over that one first and I shall. I'm having some, well, in general, I'm not good with heavy things, but I'm actually having some neck issues at the moment. I'm on some quite strong painkillers. Okay, move it across to this one. And um, my neck is very sore because my connective tissue is functional. <laughs> EDS, the musical. Has anyone got any conversation starters? I have a look in the kitchen. Like in the kitchen, uh, it, it is a nice kitchen. Somebody says uh, silicon baking dishes exist. This is new to me. Oh, yeah, they are. The silicon baking dishes are a thing. Yeah, you've got style, kitsch style. <laughs> nice, nice work. Right, that should do. Thank you. I'm not giving it to you yet. Yucky, yucky. Are you planning on expanding your merch or would love to see some more accessories like a beanie? Well, as it happens, I am in conversations with someone about expanding my merch. There is certainly going to be a new hoodie slash t-shirt design. I haven't thought of what it will be yet, but it will be marvellous, no doubt. And I'm also wanting to bring out some pin badges and postcards would be the next thing I'd quite like to do. I think that would be fun. So like autism awareness, ADHD awareness, neurodivergent awareness, disability is great and we're all awesome type stuff that we can wear or give to our friends to remind them of how brilliant we are. What Lego set have you bought? I can't tell you what Lego set I have bought. Who asked that question? Uh, Chazza Shazza. Chazza Shazza. I said earlier that I'm not going to tell you what Lego set I bought, and I meant it. It's a secret. What? Are there any good books lately? Uh, yes. <laughs> so, Roz, who I think is in the chat, is Roz in the chat? Lady Rosalind. I'm not seeing all that. Roz sent me a book that is by the author, and she'll be able to tell you who it is because she pays attention to such things, who uh, wrote the recent Netflix uh, popular series. What was the name of that thing? <laughs> oh, God. Names. Uh, what was the name of that thing that we watched with all the um, posh people doing posh things and finding husbands? society thing. Burrington, Burrington, Bedlington, I don't know what it's called, but anyway, I read a book by the same author, so it's essentially a very cheesy, romantic nonsense. Bridgerton. Bridgerton, that's it, by the same author who wrote Bridgerton, designed to just be Really frothy, silly fun, and it was just what I needed. And I had a little bit of a tradition going on. See, this is what I'm doing to get through lockdown because I don't know about you, but it's getting a little bit dull, even for those of us who don't leave the house often. Is to have little set treats on particular days. So, for example, on a Sunday, I have a bath and I read romantic com period comedy in the bath, obviously. It's very indulgent, it's very decadent, it's very good. Right, I'm going to hand this over. You don't want this now, really, do you? Um, okay, all right, it's all so fine. I'm looking forward to Star on Disney, Disney Plus. So we now have two Victoria sponge mixtures nicely prepared and ready to go in the oven. So I shall put those in the oven. Must wear... Uh, and gloves. Don't know why I did that. Felt like it might be entertaining, was it? I don't know. Right, it's going in. Oh, gosh, that's hot. Why am I surprised by the oven being hot? Oh no, I nearly lost it. Oh gosh, I nearly lost it to the floor. That would have been the perfect, it would have been a one layer Victoria sponge, wouldn't it? Okay, so I now have to bake that for 
25 to 30 minutes. So essentially, you're going to see me take the cake out by the looks of it and maybe quickly smear some stuff on it. So it is, can someone set an alarm and let me know when 25 minutes are up? I would appreciate that because I might well forget. Now, I'll get what I'm going to put on it. Let's see what I'm going to put on it. Oops. I'm basically not even in the picture anymore, but that's okay. Okay, I'm back. Sorry about that. I thought I'd gotten everything out of the fridge, but I had not. I have got buttercream star icing and strawberry jam right in the middle. Ready? Now, I hadn't really thought about the fact that there would be a period in which I was waiting with the cake in the oven. I hadn't really planned for that. Are you looking forward to Star on Disney Plus? Star. What is Star? I don't really know. I think I saw it. I think I saw. Oh, there's a new thing called Star that people are excited about on Disney Plus, but I don't know what it is. Do either of you know what it is? No, the kids don't know what it is either. I just recently watched a very sad. On Saturday, I was having a bit of a bad day, and I don't know how I do this. Do you do this? You're having a bad day, and you think, right. I'm going to watch something. I'm going to chill out, put my pyjamas on. I'm going to watch something on the television. It's going to make me feel better. And I chose a movie called Clouds on Disney+. Plus. Now, I should have really been forewarned by the fact that it's about a boy with cancer whose song will be his legacy. So essentially, it's about a boy with cancer who is going to die. And I don't know what part of me thought, this will cheer up my day. I don't know. It did not. It was quite... It's a good film. I definitely recommend it, but I would recommend watching it when you're feeling a little bit stronger than I was in that moment. I was not feeling, I was not feeling ready for an emotional thing. I was not. Uh, somebody says, can you share what fridge magnets you've got? Fridge magnets. You'd like to hear about the fridge magnets? Oh yes, Mr. Purple will be very pleased about this. Can't see them all. Can't see them all. So we have got a bit of a system by well, we have got a system whereby new fridge magnets from that very year go on this section of the fridge. The fridge. The fridge. Did I say fridge? Words. Working memory. Go on this section of the extractor fan. However, since in 2021 we have not been anywhere, there are not any magnets. And in fact, last year, this is last year's magnets, and it's probably about half of what we would normally, or two thirds of what we would normally have. And because we knew we weren't going anywhere and would not have very many fridge magnets, we actually made, we all made some female fridge magnets, which you can see about there. I think the orange one is a good lockdown indicator. So yeah, so the fridge magnet, Let's buy fridge magnets whenever we have fun adventures and keep them there. It's not working out so well at the moment. Blumming pandemic. And the ones up the side. Oh yeah, I can't talk about those because you can't see them. I I'd finished there because that's where I finished. Oh, I had one to go back. Oh, um, Mr. Purple has cleaned the bowl somewhat. Nice. Have you got sticky hands now? Do you need some kitchen roll? No. Oh, goodness. So, ask me anything. Ask me your autism related problems, your ADHD related problems, or what is my favourite brand of deodorant, where do I sleep at night, am I a vampire? Anything you fancy, and I'll answer it. Maybe. Possibly, honestly. Possibly jokingly, who can tell? I don't know. Oh, it's lovely. There's lots of chats. I might move you. I might move you over here and then I can see you better. This is where you all are. This is where you all live, right? You don't live in real places. Oh, adult friendly visuals. That's quite a good idea. Um, how have the kids been coping during lockdown? How have the kids been coping during lockdown? Much better than the adults, I think, is the honest answer. Would you agree, kids? Yeah, I think much better than the adults because I think that kids get their sense of safety and their sense of structure from what the adults around them are telling them and mirroring. And so on the whole, I think they're okay. They're doing really well with their online learning and they love video games and there's just a lot of time to play video games right now. So that's working out quite well. Um, 
yeah, they're all doing really well. I, on the other hand, have coped marvellously with lockdown up until about a week ago. I was loving lockdown. I was learning things about myself. I was developing purple alert. It was all going swimmingly. And then I just kind of lost it with it. I think it was the point where January felt like it was a million days long and it was always raining. And <laughs> I think I just not being able to get out. I think I just lost it a little bit. Uh, somebody was asking uh, that they haven't seen Supergirl for a while. Is she okay? Is she doing okay? Yes, Supergirl is doing well. She is the least keen to be in front of a camera. She has actually got a YouTube channel where she talks about Splatoon, but you don't see her. Um, but she's not keen to be on YouTube, but she's absolutely fine and happy and dandy. Um, let me see. How long did it take you to get to the right dose of ADHD meds? How long did it take me to get to the right dose of ADHD meds? Interesting story. Part of the reason I may be struggling a little bit today with remembering words is that I took my meds this morning at 8 o'clock and I should have taken my second dose at 1 o'clock, which would have taken me through and past this live stream. Only I didn't because I forgot. The irony of forgetting to take your own ADHD meds, I forgot. So they ran out at about 3 or 4 o'clock. Um, but but going back to the actual question that you answered answered asked me, uh, it took I think I started on them in like maybe three months, maybe three months, and that's getting a prescription each month, so three attempts to find the right dose, I suppose. Yeah. Uh, tips when special interests stop making you happy. Tips when special interests stop making you happy. That's a really hard one, and I have a really hard time with that one because um, I get attached to a special interest in the way that you might be committed to a relationship. So if it starts to lose its shine for me, I still kind of make myself do it for a while, like, like I have an obligation. So, for example, um, I still love Animal Crossing. But I don't play it as often because I've been playing it since March and there's only so much interest you can have in something like that. So I go back in from time to time. But the problem is, is that when you go back in, all your weeds and stuff have grown. So I was like, I have to do this every day. And then I remembered that I don't have to. So I think that my first tip would be, if you fall out of love with a special interest, it's okay to just stop doing it for a while because you might find but later down the line, don't throw out all the stuff related to it. If you've invested in all the fiber and all the knitting needles and all the patterns in the world, don't get rid of it all. Put it under the bed and do something different for a while. And at some point, I can almost guarantee you will think, oh, I fancy doing that again. And I say this from experience as the girl that bought a bunch of stuff for various hobbies, decided it wasn't doing it anymore, got rid of it, and then has wanted to do it again. Needle felting. Since. So... Yeah, don't feel committed to the special interest. Don't feel guilty because you no longer want to do it. Find something else that you love and move along. Uh, favourite Doctor Who character from any... Favourite Doctor Who character? Of all the characters, so not just the Doctor? Mm -hmm. Ooh, gosh. The Doctor's daughter, I think. An interesting fact, she was played by David Tennant, who was the Doctor at the time's wife. So that must have been weird. An Oedipal. Oedipal? Is that the right way to put it? No, more... Um, Oedipal complexy? I don't know. Called, um, nepotism. If you haven't been incredibly... No, not nepotism, because that's favouring someone that's, in your family. Yeah, exactly. Having an, no, Oedipal is uh, on the, based on the Greek legend where uh, the son ends up having a relationship with his mother and yeah, then realises... Yeah, that's husband and wife, does it? But she was playing his daughter. Okay. See? Mm, See? Mm, I, okay. I'm right, aren't I? You tell him. I thought, okay. What's your favourite movie? Favourite movie, uh, Lost in Translation. So, uh, if you like the stream, despite the fact that I forgot that the cake would take some time to cook and dropped out three times, it would still be great if you could yes. like the stream <laughs> by pressing the button. I would definitely appreciate that. Okay. We've got... Uh... Oh, the other thing that I should tell you is, and this is not, I'm not doing any promo today. You know I have a members club, you know blah, blah, blah. But this is a new thing, so I'll tell you about it. I have set up a Ko-Fi because I was asked to set up a Ko-Fi by a follower or a few followers. And then when I set it up, so that's there. If you want to buy me a bubble tea, great, go over there and do that. There is a link to that in my channel description and on my socials. 
But while I was there, I realized that you can set up a shop. So now, if you want to buy one of my stickers, instead of having to email me, which probably feels a bit awkward, you can just go to the Ko-Fi shop and you can just buy a sticker and it, and it does it. And like you'd buy something in a normal online shop. So I've upgraded on the how I sell my stickers from. I thought it'd be good to say that. What um, else? Somebody set a timer. I'm trying to find who it was. Oh, Mel. Can you ask? Set 17 eight. minutes. Okay. All right. Yeah. All right. Okay. That was. Yeah. Hmm. That was that was a minute ago. So about 15 minutes. Um. So um. <laughs> How do you get yourself motivated again when you're complete, completely depleted of energy? How do I motivate myself? Well, actually, funnily enough, that kind of happened today because it's been a bit of a long day because I started the day with a meeting about an EHCP. I'm not going to say which child's because that feels invasive. And then I ha Wednesday is the day that I work because um, essentially Mr. Purple usually works and I stay down here and supervise the kids whilst also half working. Um, and I need one day where I can just get my filming done without any interruption. So I do that on a Wednesday. So I've done that all day um, without any breaks, really. And I was absolutely sh shattered. Even though I'd taken some time to rest, I was absolutely shattered thinking, oh my goodness, I've got to live stream and somehow be entertaining when I feel like sitting in a corner rocking. So I put on some really fun, loud music to sing along with. And that will usually just kind of lift me up. And, and interesting story, when I was younger and I was a circus artist, I don't know whether you all know that I used to be a circus artist, but I did. I was in a juggling act um, and we were performing at a really big, important, I uh, can't think what the word is now. Convention? No, where pe multiple people perform in the same show. Variety show, I guess, but only for juggling. Anyway, we were in this show in this big theatre in somewhere, some coastal town somewhere, can't remember where. And because I was so often performing in big theatres in coastal towns, how can you set the specific one? And in the same show as us, there were these Russian kids, really. They were 13 or 14. I must have been about 21, 22 at the time. And um, I was getting really, really nervous. And the girl from this Russian duo was dancing and doing cartwheels. And I said, oh, you've got a really great pre-show approach to um, getting energised. And she said, yeah, what you want to do is feel really positive about it, have a dance, have a sing, jump around, go into it feeling happy and positive. And I've sort of taken that with me for the last 20 years whenever I'm doing a show, which essentially this is a kind of show. It's a weird show in which I talk about myself and make a cake, but it is a show. Um, and you, you bring that energy into what you're doing because there's no point in me being here if I'm not going to bring some energy to share with you guys because that's... The whole point of my live streams really is let's try and be a bit happier than we were before we started. So yeah, that's what I do. That's a very long-winded way of saying put on some energetic music and try and dance around. Unless you are tired because you have crashed and you are physically tired and you actually need to rest. Not energise yourself, in which case do that. All bases covered. When you were younger, as like a child or a teen, did you feel different or how did you feel compared to others? When I was a child, did I feel different? Yes. 100%. I knew I was different. I don't remember ever not feeling different, so it must have started at a really young age, and it was definitely confirmed by the children that I went to school with, particularly at secondary school, telling me that I was a weirdo. That didn't help. So yeah, I always felt different, um, and it was such an incredible relief to find out that I was autistic and there were lots of other people who were different in very similar ways to me, and that actually I'm not a complete weirdo and I'm not on my own. That was a great thing to discover. Does Mr. Purple ever go in front of the camera? Does Mr. Purple ever go in front of the camera? No response. <laughs> he actually, I should say, is in one of the Purple People videos. So I think if it's, if there's no practical way for us to film a video, like a vlog where we're out and about, Without Mr. Purple making a brief appearance, he would be willing to do that in a purple person video, not in a big, big video. But in general, he's a very private person with no no objections to me doing this, fully supports me doing this, is really proud of me for doing this, but has no desire to be a part of it. Which is a shame because, you know, but then I'm kind of like there's a part of me that's like, oh, videos about us as a partner would be really popular and really helpful. But then so many YouTube partners seem to break up. 
I'm thinking about, you know, some of my favorites. I'm not going to name names, actually, because that's really insensitive. But one of my favorite YouTube couples just recently split up. So maybe it's for the best that we don't do that. Um, what do you think your family and Ross's spirit animals are? My family and Ross's spirit animals. Spirit animals. My spirit animal is a lizard. I don't know why or how I know that. I have got a lizard tattoo, um, but I know that my spirit animal is a lizard. I like baking on rocks. In fact, I've actually done, there is a picture, I should probably share it on social at some point, where I've actually done a lizard pose on a rock in the sun. That's how lizardy I feel. I would say that Mr. Purple's spirit animal, I'm just going to say because he's not part of it, so I can make it up, is a tortoise. <laughs> um, I would say that Wonder Girl's spirit animal is a red panda. Robo Boy, I don't know whether he's going to like this, but his spirit animal is absolutely a dog. He and Coco, I'm not calling my child a dog. Do not call social services. That's not what's happening here. Um, but he likes running and food. food and cuddles. So come here, Robo Boy. Do you mind coming in? <laughs> Do you have objections to me saying that your spirit animal, would you like to change your spirit animal? No, I completely agree with you. You completely agree with me. Okay. I completely agree with you. He's fine. <laughs> He's fine. Um, and then I would say that super kid spirit, spirit animal is a cat. She is really cat-like, isn't she? Yeah. yeah, she's very much like a cat. She's like, hey, I want something. Anyway, see you later. <laughs> Which, fully respect that too. And Ros's spirit animal, when Ros is in the chat, so is she still in the chat? I hope she's not going to judge me. Yes, I'm not. But essentially... I would go with sloth, which probably sounds awful, but no, but hear me out, because sloths are A, adorable, B, not lazy, they actually get a lot of stuff done, people don't realise, and C, sloth. sloth, did I say it wrong again? <laughs> I can't say sloth, why can't I? It's because I'm from the West Midlands, where we pronounce O's like that, yeah. Okay, how long have we been married? How long have we been married? Interestingly enough, we are celebrating our 20th wedding anniversary in July, at the end of July, which is very exciting. We were actually going to have a, because when we got married, we were really quite young. I was only 21 and we hadn't got much money. So we basically did it like really on the cheap, didn't have a reception, etc. Just got married in a registry office, went to a park. So, and it was lovely. I make that sound bad. It was lovely. It was a lovely, relaxed, lovely day, but we'd quite like to do the proper wedding reception, people walking around with things on trays for you to eat. If there are no people walking around with things on trays, it's not proper. Um, and we were going to do that. And then there's a pandemic. So it doesn't feel like a great time to be organizing a celebration of that kind. So we've decided we'll do that at 25 years instead. And this year, we are hoping, maybe if I say it on this live stream, it will definitely happen because we'll have committed to get new wedding rings made. Because the rings that we've got were, as we said, as I said, you can have a lot of money. They were the cheapest H. Samuel rings. And whilst they mean a lot, it, I'd like something a bit more blingy, a bit more. Basically, I want something that looks like a fairy would wear it with bling on it, which I'm sure now that I've said that description, Mr. Purple is going to have no problems finding. Very blingy ring. That's what's what your, I want. What's your favourite season? And uh, my favourite season. Oh, that's hard. Definitely not autumn or spring. Or are they? I like. I mean, all the seasons are good. Probably, probably spring actually. Probably spring because spring, you're just saying goodbye to the winter. Brilliant, no more rain. But it's not summer yet. I quite like anticipation for the same reason that I like Christmas Eve more than Christmas Day. I think I like the looking forward to something more than I like the actual thing. I like being in the bit just before it. That's nice. Right, Mel, how long have we got left on the timer? Oh, I should probably check it, actually. Mm. Oh, it's not cooked yet. It's nearly cooked, but it's not yet cooked. I reckon it's probably about five minutes off. Is that correct, Mel? Have I got about five? Is it Mel that's timing it? A couple of people. couple of people. Who else is timing it? Yeah, 20 years is quite, is quite impressive. I agree. Six minutes. To be honest with you, I feel like that's the biggest blessing of my life, that I've managed to find someone that I can be with for this length of time and still be together. Feels like a small miracle because 
It may surprise many of you, but I'm not always the easiest person with all the things, with all the things that I deal with, that we deal with, it's not always easy. Yeah, I was getting this initially just to put the things on. Okay. Move that uh, he's asking, is Wonder Boy autistic? Is Robo Boy autistic? No, he is not. As far as we know. Don't think so. Probably not. <laughs> <laughs> but he is. Do you mind if I tell the story of how you stuck up for that child? He is a brilliant ally. So um, Robo Boy started secondary school this year, which is a big thing, but only went for a term, so that's a shame. But during the term that he was there, there's a child in his class who has a one-to-one -one support who we assume has some kind of neurodivergent going on and that, that's why he's got his one-to-one -one. but he's quite easily and we can some of us relate to this probably quite easily led by the other children going hey do this do this and then he does the thing and then gets into trouble and it was a, basically a situation like that and he got into trouble and and robo boy actually said to the teacher hang on a minute i want to tell you what happened what actually happened was this child wound him up to get him into trouble and say this and he still got into trouble but the other child got into trouble too so he defended the more vulnerable child and I was really proud and I feel like that partly comes from being a part of a family like ours where all differences are are accepted yeah uh, four minutes so uh, Mel says she's been with her husband that long too and feel the same way a miracle for her too yeah yeah, it's great, isn't it? You go, I think that's the thing. I think sometimes it's quite easy when you're dealing with, uh, when you're neurodivergent and therefore tend towards catastrophizing anxiety and low self-esteem, it's really, really easy to focus on the things that are going wrong and the things that you haven't achieved and the things that you're not good at. But actually, if you look at the things that you have achieved and that you are good at, you can kind of rewire your brain to start to think that way more often. And when I do my little list of reasons that even though I feel like I'm a complete disaster, reasons that that is not true, evidence that that is not true, the first place that I always go to is my lovely family. Because obviously <laughs> the kids have to be here, so I guess that's not evidence. Um, but they do seem to like me, so that's evidence. And um, and Mr. Purple loves me, and I'm really lucky to have that. And additionally, I was speaking to Super Kid, our eldest, about this, saying, oh, I feel like I'm a bit of a disaster, like 10% of the time as a mother, and then 90% brilliant. And she said, actually, let's work this out, because she's autistic. Let's work this out. When was the last time you had a meltdown? And we worked out that, actually, I'm only a nightmare 2% of the time. And that made me feel proud, because <laughs> everyone's probably a nightmare 2% of the time, right? Uh, I reckon. Check that cake. Check the cake. Oh yeah. Check in the cake. Right, it's nearly there. I've just put a. I'm just going to swap them over. Let me tell you this though. This is quite amusing. When we thought this live stream might not happen because I kept dropping out, the thing that my family, particularly Mr. Purple, were most concerned about was whether the cake was going to be made. They were not concerned about whether the live stream was going to happen, how I felt about that. Their main concern was, where are you at with the cake, though? <laughs> <laughs> so they'll be very pleased to see that there is, in fact, a cake um, going to be coming out of this oven. Only because I was going to take over. Don't take my laughs away from me. <laughs> Do you think comedians' wives are really that bad? <laughs> Probably not. Probably not. We're getting there. We're getting there. I reckon about three minutes, two minutes. I don't know. Let's have a competition. I'm going to name two cakes. You're going to vote on which one is best, and then I will let 
the world know, and that will then be a fact. So the two cakes that I'm going to choose today are Victoria sponge or lemon drizzle. Victoria or drizzle in the chat. And then we will decide which cake is best of those two cakes. And, and also, because then I can see that you are actually, there are actually people there. I'm not just talking to a camera in my kitchen. <laughs> Come here and say that. So <laughs> I said Victoria sponge or lemon drizzle. And what did you say? <laughs> Cheesecake for life. Cheesecake for life. Cheesecake is the best cake. Cheesecake is the best cake. Yeah, so which is a tart. Except for how it's a tart. It's not a cake, it's, it's a tart. Oh no, let's not start this again. <laughs> let's just not start this again. When Wonder Girl had a cheesecake for her birthday, there was a huge family row whether, about whether cheesecake is an actual cake. And I'm not exaggerating, there was an actual family row, wasn't there, about whether cheesecake was, a, was in fact a cake. So yeah, whilst also voting on Victoria sponges and lemon drizzles, anyone with an opinion on whether cheesecake is a cake or not is very welcome to argue with my children. So what we've got, we've got sponge, oh gosh, are you counting? I can't count. I didn't think that through, did I? What do I think about the Sia movie? Ooh, good question. Whilst Mr. Purple totals up and we know the best cake. Uh, Disney, uh, Andy says it's time to get the cake out. Um, cheesecake is cakes as well. <laughs> okay, so it's uh, Victoria Sponge. Victoria Sponge is the winner. No surprises there. I think Victoria Sponge is like the master of the cakes. It's like the cake from which all the other cakes. So if you think about like, I'm going to do a dog analogy. If you think about the fact that all dogs originally came probably from one breed of dog or two or three breeds of dogs, and then, it, I mean, I'm not even sure if that's true, so this is nonsense. And then it evolved into, let's put these two dogs together and see what happens, and then, you know, and then we ended up with loads of dogs. Why was I starting this? Victoria Sponge is the same in the cake land. It is the original cake. And then someone thought, what would happen if you mix this with a carrot? And you got carrot cake. And then someone thought, I'll go one up on you. How about if I just sprinkle some sugar and a bit of lemon over it? And then the lemon drizzle was born. And basically, you can look at any cake, name any cake, and you can see where it originated as a Victoria sponge. And that is a fact. So what's your favorite? Which one do you pick? Lemon drizzle. <laughs> Sorry, I really like a lemon drizzle cake. That's why it's the next cake that came into my head. So we've got cheesecake is a pie, cheesecake is a cake. Cheesecake is a cake, cheesecake is a tart. Cheesecake. How do you join the club? You join the club by clicking on the join button, which are you, let's start with, are you on an iPad, a phone or a laptop? And can people in the chat help Amanda join the club so that I'm not boring you all by talking to Amanda about joining the club? So I'm just going to quickly talk about SIA because somebody asked and I would like to have an opinion on the internet about SIA. My opinion is, is that SIA, I listened to a, to a podcast where Louis Theroux interviewed SIA, SIA about a week before all the SIA music drama. And essentially, she came across as quite a vulnerable, fairly mentally ill, unwell, unstable person, which made me feel that someone with those factors made some really bad choices by consulting with Autism Speaks, by hiring a non-neurodivergent actress, etc., that we all know about. And then she got told by the autism community what was wrong with her approach to, to music, and she handled that so badly. Like, if she'd have just gone, oh, oh gosh, I'm sorry, you're right, I'm absolutely wrong, this was, you know, it would have been okay. But what she did was said, I didn't hire an autistic actress because they wouldn't be able to handle the role and also wouldn't be able to dance well enough and made us all mad again. So essentially, Sia, in my, in my opinion, is someone who needs therapy and maybe then she wouldn't make bad choices anymore. So That's what I think. Person joining us on the iPad? Uh, you can come in and say things if you want to, Wonderbell. I know, no. Okay. I know cheesecake is a tart or a cake. I googled it, and it is officially, sadly, a tart. Oh, no, I'm correct. I'm depressed. Oh no. Do you need some comfort? Oh dear. 
So that we're sorting all sorts of things out now, aren't we? Victoria sponges are the origin of all cakes. Sierra needs therapy, and cheesecakes are a tart. And it didn't look like it was going to go well, this ice cream. Oh, I think the cake's ready. Mm. Oh, it's I'm not sure that's not a clean knife, so it's impossible to say. So how do you check, for those of you who might not know, but I'm sure there's not many of you, if a cake is cooked, is you stick a knife in it, and if it comes out <laughs> clean, it's cooked. Or you can do the spongy test where you push down and it springs back up again if it's cooked. And it's passed both those tests. So here's what I'm going to do, because this now needs, this now needs time to cool before I apply buttercream style icing and strawberry jam for probably about 15 minutes to half an hour and I'm not going to live stream for another 15 minutes to half an hour because nobody wants that. Nobody wants to see me collapse in a physical crash because of my health problems because I pushed this too far. No, so here's what I'm going to do. When it's made, I am going to take a picture of it and I'm going to put it on my Instagram story. So if you want to see what happens with this cake, go and follow me over there at Purple Ella and Coco and you will see the finished cake, which she doesn't, doesn't feel like much of a pull, but there you have it. I'm really sorry I couldn't make a whole cake. I didn't think it through. I hadn't thought about the fact. I thought Victoria sponge, about an hour, completely forgetting that it has to go in an oven and stay in there for some time. And that's what happens when you have, if you are neurodivergent and you struggle with planning out steps to achieve a task. In action, live be your entertainment. So, I think that's probably about long enough. If you haven't already, don't forget to like the stream. And um, on Friday, I have a video coming out about a emotional regulation that I sh you should definitely check out. I'm really happy with how it's turned out. It's a really helpful video, even if I do say so myself. And um, yeah, see you. I used to, Mr. Purpose typing. See you on the next time that I do see you. And all right to BT, open access to ask them to give me fiber directly to my door. Thank you for watching. I hope I've cheered you all up a little bit. Take care for now. Bye-bye.